<laughs> All right, so we went over the peace of God and how, you know, consider the fowls of the air, the birds of the air. They're not out there sowing. They're not out there reaping. They're not gathering into barns, worried about tomorrow. They just go about their lives and God feeds them. And then, so God knows we have these needs. So when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you. Uh, we also saw where to put our thoughts. You know, finally think on these things, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just. You know, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, whatever's of a good report, think on these things and do these things. And so that's what we can do with our mind. And we cast all our cares on him. We let our requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God will keep our hearts and minds. The peace of God when we do these things, when we do what he asks us to do. So that's what we went over last week. Now this week, I'd like to go over some aspects of joy. Uh, two of them. But really, number one, that we can have joy even in the hard times. In spite of the afflictions and whatever else, the sufferings that this world brings against us, we can still have joy. And uh, the first verse we'll go to talks about the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's pretty cool. So that's another area where we want to live. So let's look at that in Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8, we'll read verse 10, and then we'll read the context of verse 10. Let me read it to you for, for you here. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, don't be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. You know, don't be sad, just be glad. <laughs> this day is holy to the Lord. So in history, this is one of the greatest times in history that we're reading here, of when the children of Israel had been carried away into captivity for a generation. This is now another generation coming back to Jerusalem and Israel. And their parents went into captivity. Why? Because they weren't doing the Word of God. So did they teach their children very well? Probably not. Now 70 years at minimum, it could, you know, depending on where you were from, it could have been longer than that, but 70 years at a minimum, that is when Israel was allowed to come back in. That's a whole new people. They're, they grew up in a different culture. They've been carried away from that land. Now they're coming back. And so they don't know the scriptures. They didn't know the word of God. It hasn't been taught to them. They knew enough to come back to this place. And they were preparing their hearts to hear the things that God had for them. So then in verse 12, you know, why did he say, don't be grieved? And all the people, where was I? Verse 12. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions to make great mirth because they had understood the words of that were declared to them. This is the first time in their lives. Look at verse uh, 8. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly, and they gave the sense, and they caused them to understand the reading. So here it was Ezra, Nehemiah, and these Levites, these certain people were speaking and reading to them from the scriptures that they had. And... They read distinctly, accurately, they gave the sense of it, and they caused the people to understand what they read, what was being declared. And so, and then it says, uh, verse 9, And Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy <coughs> unto the Lord your God, mourn not, nor weep. I mean, they were crying, they were weeping. Why? Because they understood the law of God, to which they had not been doing, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. All right, so here, mourn not, nor weep, 
For all the people wept when they had heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat. Nothing but ribeyes and you know, grape juice from here on out. Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. Send portions to them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Why? Because they understood the words that they read in the scriptures. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Now let's flip way to the back of the Bible here to 1 John chapter 1. First John and chapter 1 verse 3 that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full, full that your joy may be full so the writing these things to us here Declaring the Lord Jesus Christ so that our joy may be full when we understand those truths. Verse 5, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That's the message. Then again in the Gospel of John. So go back here to the Gospel of John chapter 17. Now, what we're about to read in John 17, these are the words of Jesus, and he knows that his hours come. This is the end of his life here. He knows that he's going to be crucified very quickly here. So these are some of the words that he's saying, knowing those things. John 17, verse 13. So he's praying. He's praying to God. And now I come to thee... And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. The joy that Jesus Christ had, he has prayed to God for those people that are hearing him and for us also who would believe. He's praying that, that our joy, or that we might have his joy fulfilled in us. The joy of Jesus Christ fulfilled in our hearts and lives. That's available. Hell, Jesus Christ prayed for it. <laughs> well, his, that dude's prayers come to pass. Yeah, yeah. All right? And that's what we have. And then, verse 14, uh, this is all very similar to what we saw in Nehemiah, how they understood the word. And then again in 1 John, how... We were to hear what they were going to declare to us that we might our joy might be full. And again here in verse 14 in the context of joy, I have given them thy word and the world hated them because they're not of the world even as I am not of the world. Mm -hmm. He just said that your joy may be or his joy may be fulfilled in us and the world's going to hate you. <laughs> He's given us God's word. I pray not that they, you, you should take them out of the world. Shucks. <laughs> He's not praying that God would take us out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Just as Jesus Christ was not of the world, you and I are not of the world. The same way. So whatever that is, you have that too. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Mm. Now I wanted to look at uh, the joy of Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 12. I know I'm jumping around a lot this afternoon, but sooner or later we'll not do that. Hebrews chapter 12. hard to compete with Will, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> All 
All right, so here's some instructions. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Ready? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. That's an interesting phrase that always catches my attention. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. It's quite a contradiction there. All right, so he, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, consider him, that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. We have his example, and we have to consider his example, or we're just going to get <coughs> wore out. So I'm trying to help put our focus to where it needs to be so that we can endure in afflictions similar to the way he did, that who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What a difference in mindset. Totally different than what you think he should be thinking about or what he should be doing. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. Eh. Let's do verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake, and you became followers of us. The word followers is in the sense of imitators. This uh, mimic or imitate. So you became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, but with joy from the Holy Spirit. So there they got joy from the Holy Spirit. And they received God's word in the middle of a great persecution. So there's great persecution, yet these people here decided to receive God's word in spite of what the rest of the world was saying about it. And then they received it, not grudgingly, but with joy. They were joyful about the situation. They were joyful just to have God's word. And it says they were imitators of us and of the Lord. How are they imitators of the Lord? By receiving the word in much affliction, but with joy from the Holy Spirit. And we just read that in Hebrews, how you know the cross was set before him, but he did it for the joy. He saw the joy that was set before him, so he endured the cross. So that affliction that came to him, and yet he could still receive God's word with joy. So they were imitators of him. They were imitating the Lord on that matter. And then also it says imitators of us. And I have an example of Paul in Colossians chapter 1. Whoops, we're going back one book here. Mm -hmm. So don't start flipping without thinking like I just did. <laughs> Colossians 1 and verse 24. Man, this verse is great. Listen to this. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Okay. Did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> One more time with feeling. All right, so this verse is hard for me to understand, especially in the King James. So I'm going to read it to you from the working translation. So the working translation renders it as now... Now I rejoice in my sufferings for you, and I supplement the affliction of Christ by my flesh for the sake of his body, which is the church. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll read it again. Now I rejoice, there's my word, rejoice in my sufferings. <laughs> All right, so the Thessalonians, again, were imitators 
of us, referring to Paul and Silas and Timothy, and that they received the word with joy in spite of the afflictions. So we have here his example that we're seeing. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for you. And I supplement the afflictions of Christ by my flesh for the sake of his body. I think that's interesting. Uh, it's fill up that which is behind in the King James is the supplement. So I'm going to read the uh, note here at the bottom in the working translation on fill up that which is behind. A phrase used of supplementing or filling in a gap where there's a need or lack, such as soldiers filling in a gap in their line of service. So there's a gap in the line. The soldiers fill in that gap. They'll supplement that line. And that's what he's saying here is that He's supplementing the afflictions of Christ. That's kind of hard to grasp, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Which he considers the body of Christ, the church, at, he considers the church, those believers, as the body of Christ. He's willing to stand in the gap and take the hit so that Christ doesn't have to, which is really you guys who are his body. So that you see... The motive there, you see the love that Paul's willing to take a beating, and I'll show it. Well, we're not going to do it. In Philippians, we'll do it tomorrow or next next week. So next Sunday we'll cover this verse. But in Philippi, he goes in there and he gets whipped. Him and Silas, being Romans, it was against the Roman law. He takes this beating, gets thrown in jail, and the result of that is that the believers are free to move, that the persecution, he stopped it with his own body. He considered that the believers are the body of Christ. If Jesus Christ was in here today, would you let someone come arrest him, or are you going to jail first? Well, that's how we are for one another. We're to stand in the gap for each other, just like that, considering each other as the body of Christ. Right? It's Christ in you. We stand in that gap for one another. We have that kind of love for one another. And we do it with joy. We're just happy to do it. Take them into jail, whatever it is. We're just happy to stand in that gap for each other. We can live with that joy with each other. And in spite of the persecutions, I wish, you know, I was worthy to, that people would persecute us, that we're making that big of a stand, <laughs> that people are so mad at us because we're making that kind of stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to be happy to do that. All right, so Matthew chapter 5. Let's read some of the words here from Jesus Christ himself as he's speaking. Matthew chapter 5. I wish I knew a lot of this stuff when I went to high school, you know. <clears throat> when I was in high school, you could really cause trouble, or you know, it's just the bullying, the human nature of kids all together in one spot. You know, these things would be wonderful to have known. All right, Matthew chapter 5. This is from uh, Jesus Christ's mouth here. Verse 9 Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Yay! <laughs> Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Wait, wait, wait. Blessed? Like happy. You're happy when you're persecuted. That's backwards. Usually when people are persecuting you and speaking evil against you, you get mad. But in contrast, Jesus Christ says you're blessed. Happy. Happy are you who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Yay! <laughs> Verse 12, how do we respond to those situations? Rejoice. rejoice. Rejoice, don't just rejoice, but rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For the same way, for they so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Mm -hmm. So you're in good company yeah. when that happens to you. So there we have it. We can have joy 
simply by knowing God's Word and understanding the Scriptures and what's written, what has been declared to us by those prophets, there's joy in just knowing God's Word. And then it can't be fleeting. We've got to have it within ourselves where they can't steal it from us. I missed that one. I was probably supposed to read that. In John 16, Jesus says, My joy I give unto you, uh, no, your joy no man takes from you. Yeah. Right? So they can't take it from you. You have to um, manage that, that joy. And so we have the joy of knowing the Word. We have to keep it when we speak God's Word, when we're doing God's Word, when we're stepping out, acting on behalf of Jesus Christ. We maintain that joy even though the world hates you. So we can have that joy in spite of all the hard times, right? Right. True. Okay. Let's do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right.